we have uh, the next uh, session. I hope Yuri is already in. Yep, I'm here. You can uh, unmute and turn your video on if you want. Otherwise, you can start with the slide uh, sharing. Yeah, I'm here. Thank you, Yuri, for uh, spending time on preparing for this event and uh, willing to share uh, your experiences with um, Kemi. And I was uh, really happy to see someone else uh, in the initial proposal at Kamai Award in Berlin coming and speaking about uh, this uh, framework. And uh, this with testing is something that I'm also looking for because uh, sometimes it's a little bit harder to discover, um, um, like, uh, you know, uh, misconfiguration, like using the wrong uh, function name in these dynamic languages comparing with the config file. On the other hand, it's easier to troubleshoot at runtime with different uh, mocking or with different um, debuggers. So uh, thanks for, uh, again, for joining us. I let you uh, start the presentation. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you. So I, I will share my screen and uh, we'll start the presentation. Uh, yeah, just give me a second for this. Uh, yes, let's go with this entire screen. So I hope everyone sees this. Yeah, so um, a little bit uh, about me. So I'm a voice and uh, video over IP software engineer. So uh, usually I'm working with Camelo. So I actually work with Camelo quite like past maybe eight years or even nine. Uh, yeah, and um, I started to work with Lua. It came from the asterisk actually, because asterisk actually also has uh, Lua module that allows you to uh, build dial plan. And then when Camilo came with uh, Kemi, uh, I, would, I was really excited about that. And uh, yeah, uh, I started to use it immediately and built a lot of services based on Lua. Uh, usual routers, even chat application uh, and uh, APIs. Uh, Camilo is with its own API on HTTP and yeah. Uh, so all this experience gave me some uh, object, uh, some uh, advantages and disadvantages of using uh, scripting uh, language uh, and Lua itself. And uh, yeah, so the most, uh, the biggest, I would say, um, advantages of the using uh, of the usage of the Kemi Lua scripting and scripting itself. Uh, is uh, here, so I will just start with it. So uh, it's first of all real language. You can do whatever you want. Uh, you have a lot of possibilities. It's uh, in that case, it's more flexible environment against the native scripting. Uh, so uh, you you not not depend uh, already so so much from the models that already built in. So you can prepare your own. Uh, then uh, Kemi uh, is really, really a nice engine, I would say, and it's explains uh, really good. So sometimes it's lack of documentation, but it, uh, it um, has a links to the documentation for the same function, not for the same, but for this particular function in native uh, scripting. And it's not big difference in between, uh, in, in between each other. And uh, yeah, you always can understand what is what is for that, what what for what and how to use it. Uh, I, I think ninety nine percent and uh, yeah. So extendable instruments, as I've said. So whatever you uh, don't have in Camilo models, you are able to implement it, it easily by yourself. So what this means? Uh, this means uh, that actually in my latest uh, pro uh, projects, I even uh, didn't use uh, text ops model, for example, at all. So uh, Lua for me much better in that case. So I started to parse SDP by my own instead of uh, using uh, Camilo built-in models because of I mean some kind of uh, really tricky things uh, to do with SDP. And then I decided why not? Why not go with um, uh, uh, with Lua? Uh, and 
last one is ability to use Camellio models as basis for extensions. So that what that means. So for example, if you need something as asynchronous, you can use a sync module or you can use a sync HTTP request as basis of building, for example, a uh, third party authentication service based on HTTP, like like example, and so on, so on. So there is a lot of possibilities that you can do uh, and your hands uh, become more free and uh, real real language Lua, Lua itself is really easy language i'm not against it. python for example or uh, javascript but lua seems really uh, easy to learn and really fast and really easy to go so this is about advantages of using lua scripting uh, versus native scripting in camellia so advantages never comes uh with uh, never comes without disadvantages so disadvantages there is also a so, couple of them. So first of all, did you get disconnected or? Yeah, I think we dropped audio from him. Yuri, are you still there? Are you muted somehow? The, his network is gray, lost. <laughs> I think we lost him. Can you give him a few seconds to reconnect? Yeah. Okay, so uh, hopefully you will be able to join soon. Meanwhile, if anyone wants to ask something, we got someone back in. Yuri, you are back. You are muted automatically if it was you joining back. That's it. Then ping on Matrix. I really hope he's just not continuing the presentation. It looks like he really lost completely connection. Let's we talk about SIP and quick. Uh, yeah, SIP is quick and that's it, or quick is SIP from Ali Shirvani. I think Ole proposed yesterday um, uh, during the open discussion or somehow suggested that uh, when I ask uh, if they have seen uh, uh, deployments of using DTLS or SCTP as a transport for SIP, uh, Ole showed interest more into looking at using Quick for um, uh, see. And uh, yeah, maybe it's in many cases just a uh, chicken egg uh, problem who starts uh, first to implement it, client or the server. Uh, probably a matter of uh, interest from the companies. Um, most of the core networks are practically running now on um, private network with uh, SBCs or H uh, proxy doing gateway between TLS on the external uh, world and likely UDP on the um, internal private network. 
which scales quite uh, well. Let's see if uh, there will be more interest in uh, getting quick or other transport layers uh, in the void world. So I don't see any reaction from Yuri, which is not good. Maybe I'm gonna send an email. I've reached out to him on uh, Matrix. I also I have him. And he responded? No. But we can use this time to let people know that they can communicate to us at Matrix channel. <laughs> uh, sorry, was it a long time ago? Uh, yeah, it was uh, probably three, four minutes at least. Three, four minutes, okay. <laughs> so, sorry, it's uh, probably here, right? No worries, no worries. It's uh, how the distributed world works. So, uh, did I step on disadvantages or where? where? Mm, maybe so it well. was on the disadvantages slide. On the disadvantages slides, thank you so much. So, uh, yeah, so, uh, uh, so going through the disadvantages, there are, there are a lot. I will share the presentation, we'll not go through it again. Yeah, so, and that's why it was created Test Suite. So Test Suite created to simplify the development process. Uh, it was an idea to start uh, to emulate end-to-end -end tests. Uh, and uh, um, it's ready for unit testing, so you can uh, wrap up um, one function and check uh, the test. And it uh, has to be, uh, so it's focused on configurations and writing more code, so you don't need to uh, write a lot of code, you can just configure how tests will run, uh, pass some parameters and it will run instead of making um, new, making more code and yeah, just adding more wrappers. So uh, uh, so let's look on the development flow. Uh, I will a little bit explain how it will improve, has to improve your development process. So in usual development, so uh, usual development flow is a uh, uh, upload CF, uh, CFG file uh, then we start in call, we run the flow, uh, we try to find the issue in the wall flow and then fix an issue, uploading CFG file on the Camilo, start call, and etc. cetera, et cetera. So start call with anything, Docker or CPU or whatever, or your own script. Yeah, so um, development flow with um, tests uh, looks like uh, the bottom one. So uh, it's a, uh, we just writing some function and uh, yeah, tests. We were also writing tests for it. I'm included it in one step just because of this also coding. So it's some kind of coding process. So uh, then we just run in tests, we catch an issue and the fix an issue. So at least one uh, step less. So uh, uh, if one step less, so it's definitely a good idea to uh, improve your time wasting on the, on the things that can be automated, let's say, uh, and decreased by time, not time uh, to remove time consuming things. So, um, and the end to end testing flow uh, is also uh, really important to understand how it uh, works. Uh, so, uh, usually, how we're making um, tests, uh, right? We making a call or with something, yeah, uh, we send in um, this call to the Camellia. Camilo parses packet data, puts all this uh, data from the packet into the variables. Mm. Uh, then um, we handling uh, in a configuration file in the green, uh, in, in this uh, green area. We can manipulate somehow with headers or with data. Uh, then Camilo builds new packet and then it sends. And what we're doing usually we're checking uh, re the results. So we're checking, okay, here's contact here changed, uh, route here removed just because of pass through Camilo. So uh, it's uh, it's done. So this is end-to-end -end testing flow. Let's uh, thinking about uh, how what 
it's not our, uh, under our control, like administrators or like uh, configuration scripters. Uh, so we definitely um, uh, don't have any uh don't have any uh we not involved in, in the parsing packet data right because camellia does it for us we can control it uh and uh, when camellia glues all the things to get, uh, together after uh, data handling so um in that case uh we can say that these parts we definitely can we can affect it anyhow definitely with our configuration right so it's automated things that Camilla does for us. So uh, why we have to uh, involve the things into our um, into our job because it's already automated, right? So and this was my idea uh, to build uh, this suite just because of if we will remove all these un unneeded parts. Uh, so if we will concentrate on this picture, we will see that uh, actually. Um, what we are doing here, we uh, actually taking parameters from the, this packet named method, let's say, right? And then we check in how, param the, the, how this uh, packet was changed. So we, we actually check in how changed past parameters. So if to simplify this picture, we will see that uh, regarding uh, configuration, we will see that uh, we pass in actually source IP and contact address and we check in, so, okay, contact, was changed here nice and uh, we pass in route headers and we see okay uh, route headers route header was removed and we have uh, only one route header so this is my idea of the uh, emulating of this end-to-end -end testing and if in this case if we will look a little bit closer on this we will see that end-to-end -end testing becomes like a unit testing to be honest because of we can't just one function that goes through the other that calls other functions and yeah so this is uh this snowball comes and then you know, at the final result we just facing uh changes that's it so we just throwing out all things that hasn't been involved and we in that out of our control actually and uh yeah so this is slides uh and uh, for now i would i wanted to demonstrate a little bit how it works and for now it's on the github it's uh available uh for uh yeah i'm online cool yeah uh it's available uh here i will share a link a little bit later in the um, our uh matrix chat uh chat uh so yeah let's go a little bit through so uh, uh it is really easy to go so uh you when you're using uh camilla uh, with lua or with python you always have this uh, mod param so for example for up lua we have some uh mod parameter load and we're loading the script so if this the script is this this is an initial file which usually contains uh, request, KSR request route, uh, reply route, and other bunch of main routes that are global function, actually, in terms of Lua. So it means that they are available everywhere. So, and this file, uh, uh, we're loading, and this file is key for us because of, here is some example, uh, what uh, does uh, test suite? It just uh, uh, included here, as we see, uh, and then we just run it. So we can uh, run it uh, even with um, even during uh, uh, running on a Camilo, it will just will not be executed um, anyhow. So it actually will be executed, but will do nothing. So uh, yeah. Uh, so and that means what you need to do is just upload to your. Uh, near the near your file example Camilo Lua in that case you need to upload this test suite uh, from the github uh, it doesn't uh, in a uh, lower rocks yet so I would put it later on so uh, this test suite you have to upload near and just include it in your file and then call it so this run function is actually the only one function that you have to call 
it contains one parameter, this uh, module, my model. So it made because of, uh, I, for example, for example, for me, it's uh, uh, not really good to keep all my configuration in one file. I usually split it in the different files and then include it into the, um, uh, into the Camilla uh, main uh, file. And this, uh, Table, which uh, is a, only one parameter of the of the run function, it has contain it has to contain all these modules has to be included to test as well. So we will be able to test these modules as well. That's that's my idea. And uh, the second uh, thing is probably most difficult thing from the first time, but it's easy to configure. Uh, as I think is write uh, tests uh, with write tests. So uh, it's configurable as I said before. Uh, that's how it looks like. So here are two tests. So we have module. Uh, so I test my module. Module. So this one, which lays near the example of Camilla and which included uh, here. Uh, so it's uh, here is here is a really simple module with two functions. Yeah, just uh, first function just runs. Second function just returns some result. Yeah, and uh, what we have to do, we just uh, uh, have, uh, have to create our test uh, description for, let's say, for my module, yeah? So uh, what it includes, so there are two required parameters, it's description and test function. So here is testing function that includes in uh, global uh, variable Camilla. And then it goes to my module, and then it goes to the tested function one. So it, it uh, basically links to this particular testing function one. And the second, uh, the second function here is test function two. Yeah. So uh, we just will check uh, returned result. So I will comment here everything for now, just to. Uh, I will do it even like that, just to not uh, call this uh, this route. And I will show you uh, some output. Uh, yeah, so here is a Docker file that give me possibility to abstract from from my local environment and run it easily. Docker file also in the com in the container. It's really easy. So I just uh, in in installing here all needs I need. So yeah, uh, git lower rocks and low five one. And I need also a JSON for some things for the uh, testing suite. And when I run it, yeah, it just, you see, it runs uh, those functions. And yeah, so uh, here shows which algorithm I will use. So default is same, not default. The uh, other algorithm I have is not same. For for now, I have just two functions. It, usually it's uh, in 90% uh, does its job really well. So we have two tests that, that was passed. And in one module, I added uh, internal logging. Uh, in one function, sorry, I added internal logging and it shows output of my function, which will be shown if we will run this function with, uh, with a Camilla, for example, in the logs, it will be shown as well. So uh, this is some basics, and let's go a little bit to more extended thing. Uh, this request route uh, it contains um, uh, first of all uh, this function I uh, um, commented. I will uncomment it a little bit later. Um, yeah, but I will include this module. So uh, this is init Lua uh, tests init is a main uh, file where your tests has to be included. Uh, description you see is the same, so we still have uh, tests. We have description, tested function, but here a bunch of new param new parameters which also described in README. So it's a uh, expected result and result container. So uh, as Camilla works, you know, so it uh, for example, if we need uh, to uh, put some uh, some data into the variable or some function puts some data into the variable, we have to. Uh, uh, somehow then uh, get this uh, data from this particular variable. It's kind of storage, so it's not actually variable. So uh, this means that uh, this uh, uh, test, test suite gives us possibility to uh, to do this 
uh, and uh, it contains smoke of camellia with some already predefined functions uh, uh, modules it's it's actually here uh, here is a, here is mock so here is main camellia mock we, will, uh, we see here is variables has some default values or we can redefine it or uh, yeah we can also we can use some modules that are already predefined here uh, as uh, as you see uh, so uh, we can uh, describe some parameters for example we can describe here uh, let's say source ip address yeah it will be uh one 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 uh, two three four and it will be shown as uh shown for us here for example so we get source ip address so this means we pass in source ip address that has to be checked uh, and yeah mm. Let's see. Sorry, a, li a little bit hurry <laughs> uh, because of two minutes left. Yeah. Yeah, and here we will see. You can, you can spend a bit of more time. We have time after the session to catch up. So, uh, but yeah. So, um, and uh, if I will run this, yeah. So let me check if I saved. Yeah, I didn't save. Uh, Uh, so this is a uh, source IP address. I passed this parameter and uh, this is known parameter uh, source IP address uh, in a usual look mail file and but and uh, how we can get it uh, with a Lua uh, configuration, right? And if I will uh, run it, yeah, test running, one, two, three, four. So here I passed it, and uh, this uh, now we can check the source IP address and do whatever we, we usually doing with source IP addresses, right? Checks, uh, check fail to ban, for example. Uh, if it's if it's uh, in a ban list, we can uh, write our own uh, uh, ban uh, list in the Lua, for example, and check it here and wrap wrap up it into the testing function. Uh, with, with this and check uh, this particular function instead of checking all the process. Yeah, and uh, also what we can do, we can also mock up some functions. So for example, um, usually, so I, I have predefined HTTP client that does uh, HTTP client query functions that does really easy things. Think if there, are, there, are, there is no past URL or variable which has to be written as a response it returns minus one or otherwise it returns one so it behaves in in general uh, like a usual function but um, we can uh, redefine its behavior a little bit just for our uh, understanding for example how it, how it goes here uh, we're calling this function and we actually expecting that uh, result of this function will be written in a avp body right and uh, reply code will be written in uh, reply code uh, so as a uh, http uh, client query acts usually and uh, yeah uh, we can uh, in this test suite let's say redefine some behavior so we can write so we have to redefine case http query uh, client query and uh, on what we have to redefine it we have to redefine on function which will set up source um, uh, sorry reply code with 200 and uh, will uh, set a uh, test message um, as a response body and uh, I already uh, run it here so there is an output which actually in our example Camilo here case okay, info to string replace code to string replace body um, so if I will let's say break everything I will but something wrong, so we'll make a mistake. Uh, typo, for example, yeah, it will say it will say that this particular um, test was failed because of expected test message, but got test message without e, right? Because of typo. And uh, the last thing, but not least, 
uh, don't forget, so we can, uh, it also can break everything because of, of this function, for example, uh, this code, uh, this um, model is not included in whole bunch of modules here. And yeah, uh, so that means that uh, Chameleon will be, uh, so this uh, script, sorry, will be uh, uh, broken. And uh, yeah, so uh, it's, it will say that HTTP client undefined. So we, we still can see usual uh, Lua uh, scenarios, uh, Lua, uh, sorry, Lua scenarios, how it throws, it throws errors. So um, it's kind of briefly, uh, Briefly, that's it. Uh, I would say, yeah. Uh, uh, thank you uh, very much for your attention. If you have some questions, uh, let me know. And it's, uh, this test suite works already on a couple of projects, works really fine. And uh, it work, uh, works on the pipeline, uh, on, the, uh, on the Git, and really easy to use. So um, uh, don't be afraid to uh, participate and don't be afraid to um, uh, use it. Don't, uh, I'm well, uh, welcome for contribu uh, contributing. So I want to I wanted to see it a uh, community useful thing. And uh, yeah, so that's it. Any questions? Thank you, Yuri. Thank you uh, for the, this uh, presentation. I find it very useful. So you have it on uh, GitHub. To yes. Yes. So it's your user ID, your typical user ID account. Uh, how, how you pronounce it? Uh, wait, your, sorry. Your user ID. Obish. Oh, <laughs> it's a little bit yeah, difficult. It's okay. kind of Russian plain of war words. Yeah. Okay, I just wanted to hear how you pronounce it because mm -hmm. I'm coming from. It's our group. loop, yeah. I'm a little bit more native speaking. And the question from uh, the list overall, it's mocks for Kenny Lua functions. Uh, I'm not sure it's in the matrix channel, so, so I'm okay. it's mocks for Kenny Lua functions. Yes. Right. Uh, yes, it's about Kemi law function. If question is about that, uh, uh, let me see. Ah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's a Kemi law function. So you can't mock here. So you can't mock here anything that not in a, in a uh, that not exported by uh, Lua Kemi. So so native some native functions that wasn't exported by Lua Kemi. Of course, you can't uh, check here because you actually can't call them from the Lua. Okay, and a remark just to have it in the recording from Tori on the channel because he did something similar for uh, Python. The advantage of Kemi is you can also unit test individual methods, so probably functions and typical uh, or specific parts of your config. Though both type of testing are very useful. Yeah. So others are building for uh, Python. As a matter of fact, I it's what I notice most of the uh, feedback on the mailing list. It's uh, Lua and Python. I'm doing uh, mainly Lua, and some others are actually using the uh, JavaScript and uh, Ruby. So practically, this supported uh, scripting languages attracted the. Uh, couple of companies on different uh, direction and the benefit is that 99% uh, of the functions are the same in all the languages are only this uh, module specific function like KSRX exit or so uh, so special processing but all function related to handling SIP traffic uh, doing routing authentication are the same in any of these uh, languages with the same kind of parameters. Um, indeed, because you made a remark at the beginning, the documentation is uh, not complete, uh, but this references to the original native scripting language corresponding function should be uh, a good starting point. With the time, I hope we can allocate more time for uh, uh, documentation. 
but it's actually really useful this links because of even the, uh, even there is no documentation you just go to the link and just see okay this function behaves like that and you uh, you able to like correlate okay if this behaves like that so i definitely have to expect uh, this from this function so it's a little renamed but anyway yeah no it's uh, more than you find with many other uh, projects in terms of documentation but as uh, fred said uh, in the previous session always it's space to improve documentation so <laughs> it was on that i think that's uh, uh, for uh, this um, uh, session not to uh, prolong it too too much as we are a little bit in the delay thank you yuri so much yeah. for this one and looking forward to eventually contribute but see updates from this uh, uh, little project with the mocking support 